following PNG's offer to buy into PNG Air rejected. Opposition question cocaine investigation in Parliament. And MTV's vocal fusion goes virtual. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Wednesday's news. PNG Air CEO Anthony Pereira has described the decision by ICCC to decline link PNG acquisition of 40% shares in the airline as a win for the consumers. The Independent Consumer and Competition Commission found that if Link PNG were to have major shares in PNG Air, it would affect airfares and service standards. Meanwhile, the news of why the acquisition was declined has raised serious concerns on how ICCC monitors airfares for domestic and international travels. On the 4th of September, the Independent Consumer and Competition Commission advised Link PNG that its proposed acquisition to buy 40% shares in PNG Air was unsuccessful. First will increase and decline in service standards. Although Link PNG uh, claimed that first will not increase, uh, the Triple C uh, did not give much uh, weight on this because. As we all know, uh, this, not, this does not happen uh, in a monos monopolistic uh, market or environment. Uh, with high barriers to entry, uh, the possibility of a new entrant that can effectively compete with any Guinea is not possible. For PNG Air, who had been vocal in the beginning of the acquisition in May, stating that it would create a monopoly in the industry, the news for them was not surprising. What competition does, um, and uh, I really reckon that uh, it is the most uh, important factor that the ICCC took into account, um, and uh, it's sort of, you know, if you're talking in victory sense, it's not a victory for PNG Air or for Link PNG. ICCC only disclosing the negative results to the market and public benefit test, stating other arguments were considered but remained confidential. This also includes the loss involved for NAS fund if the proposal was rejected. We've considered that, uh, and uh, those are some of the things that are confidential, so we won't uh, disclose that now. Uh, but uh, we've con considered this, and uh, with this one, it's, it's uh, declined uh, from our side, and uh, Naspan is, you know, it's, it's up to them to talk to other uh, potential buyers out there. But the decline in the acquisition due to issues of airfares and service standards raising the concern about whether or not ICCC actually regulates airfare prices. The industry has, uh, itself is very technical, uh, and, and uh, to um, do that, it's, it's sort of like a damage control team. And at this stage, when there is competition, let's allow competition to uh, work itself out and let the market process to determine the prices here. Yeah. ICCC admitting it was an area they could look at if recommendations for an inquiry were directed by government. But whether the government would recommend this would test the government's transparency as the state through state-owned entity owns the National Airport Corporation and the biggest airline in the country in New Guinea. If the government thinks that that's the area that the should, uh, uh, should look at and regulate, then uh, the government uh, uh, has to uh, resource us and, and, and tell us, give the direction that, okay, you undertake a study into this and um, yeah. Yeah. start regulating that. Mm -hmm. Adelaide Sirox Kari, National MTV News. The Public Accounts Committee has completed its deliberation on its inquiry into the Health Department's procurement and distribution of drugs. The final inquiry report was tabled along with its findings and recommendations in today's sitting of Parliament by Member for Ambum Kompiam and Chairman of PAC, Sir John Pondari. 
proceeded into its full stage of completion, the report of the Public Accounts Committee's inquiry into the Department of Health, specifically on procurement, supply and distribution of medicines, was presented in today's sitting in Parliament. Given the lapse in time from when the committee set to date, the inquired report was impeded due to the recent worldwide scare of COVID-19. PAC Chairman Sir John Pundari highlighted during a media conference hosted by committee members three months back in June that some findings from the department's procurement and distribution of drugs have been very alarming. And our inquiry has been about all the public funds that has gone into the procurement of drugs. And uh, the inquiry has uh, revealed a lot of failures on the part of the National Health Department. In the way we have conducted ourselves, uh, the findings have been alarming in that a lot of lives have been lost. A lot of facilities have been uh, sort of medicines. Uh, this is something that the country should not have experienced. Uh, the facts speak for itself, our basic human rights, and on the back of our health and education in this country, we should not continue to seek to profit uh, on the back of people's life, on the back of our people's education. The final report presented today came with up to 15 recommendations from the committee and alternative solutions going forward. The establishment of a national pharmaceutical authority to be responsible for the procurement and oversight of supply and distribution of medicines and medical equipment in the country was among recommendations presented in today's sitting. The next part of the inquiry will be on the health department's use of public funds. The education department will be next in line to come under PAEC scrutiny. Anit Kora, National MTV News. The people of the autonomous region of Bougainville are still waiting for the outcome of the referendum which was taken last year. Member for Central Bougainville, Sam Akoitai, raised this in Parliament today, asking the minister responsible when this would be announced. People of the autonomous region of Bougainville voted in a non-binding referendum on possible independence late last year. Voters were asked to choose between Bougainville having continued autonomy within PNG or becoming independent. They still wait for the final outcome of this referendum. Asking blow me the solo ego long ego long minister long part time now na. All people blow me blow blow asking question where where are we now? One time uh, issue long. Deal one time this result law referendum. Bougainville Affairs Minister Se Pukatemu said negotiations started but were put on stop because of other activities happening on the island. After the last uh, joint uh, supervisory body meeting on the 21st of March this year at the APEC House, uh, the two governments agreed that further consultation program will be postponed because of the ABG elections. With the return of reads for Bougainville elections set for 16th of September, Sepuka assured the people of Bougainville the two governments were in constant communication and will continue from where they left. And our national technical team uh, comprising of both ABG uh, technical officers as well as our government officers have been regularly meeting to progress some of the uh, outstanding matters. In particular, they've been uh, uh, progressing on some of the principles that we need to follow during the consultations. Ruth Rongola, National MTV News. Governor for East Pacific Island Bird in Parliament today called for transparency in the appointment process of board members and directors of state-owned enterprises. My concern surrounds the governance of these organizations. How can the minister ensure that the appointment of the board and the managing director is done through a process that is transparent in order to ensure that we get the best people on these boards? Because past experience has been that the one talks and relatives and churchmates of people in power tend to be the ones that run these organizations into the ground. Since we took office, 
to make sure that uh, we appoint people purely on a merit basis, purely uh, credible people in terms of uh, positions, in terms of MDs or boards, through totally an independent uh, selection. And of course, uh, th this may or may not uh, go well with our present employees. Sometimes, in terms of quality, you also bring people from outside. But Mr. Speaker, I just want to assure that uh, the Honourable Governor, in terms of our SOE reform uh, policy, that uh, this is one of our main core principles to ensure every appointment is done through an independent uh, selection process and purely on uh, merit-based appointments. And we'll have more news from Parliament and the day's other headlines when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Southern Highlands Governor William Powe today queried the process involved in awarding a 35 million kina construction project to a Chinese company to carry out construction work on the new Western Pacific University in his province. Higher Education Minister Nick Kuman assured Governor Powe that an investigation will be carried out to a certain fact surrounding this contract. Can the good minister confirm or deny? whether China Jiangsu International Economic and Technical Group Limited has been awarded this contract based on the recommendations by the Western Pacific University Council. Let me firstly inform the parliament that as a minister responsible for the higher education, I had no visibility at all in that particular uh, procurement. Although I'm the minister, I knew of the funds which was coming um, to the country for specifically for Western, uh, Western Pacific University. Member for Yalibu Pangia and former Prime Minister Peter O'Neill in a point of order also called on Minister Kuman to furnish a detailed report to Parliament on this. Because the council established has got some very reputable Papua New Guineans on that council, including, say, Peter Bata, who is the chairman of that. Now, these, all these companies that have been bidding for this project are all China government-owned companies. So if my good governor has got some issues about corruption in this awarding of this, in this contract, he must produce his evidence, and I urge the minister, please, table that particular investigative report on the floor of parliament. Thank you. Because why I say this is because we are trying to get the first intake of students in 2021, Mr. Speaker. Our region needs a university. Our governor has not put one toy in this university, but he's got the audacity to ask questions and we respect that. Banking institutions have always been in the forefront in promoting financial literacy. Minister for Commerce William Duma now wants them to make rural banking their priority, especially the National Development Bank and Bank South Pacific. The national government through its SME funding support has put funds into the National Development Bank and Bank South Pacific to assist struggling SMEs throughout the country. Member for Nuku Joe Sungi said while that gesture is welcoming, the issue faced by many districts in the country, including his own district, is that they do not have the two banks. Plan the old district, plan the long country, you know got BSP stop, now you know got NDB2 stop. Now suppose all this district like Oksim, this lad in our money, Balmas Kisim Balus, or Kisim Boat, not finding this lad, save Siko Lokisim. So in that minister by clear him, suppose he got some like detail, a uh, guide, law make him this lad access, uh, provide him this accessibility, law especially rural farmers, number one. Minister for Commerce William Duma said setting up sub branches of banks in all rural districts is a challenge for the government. As minister responsible, I recognize that difficulty. It is one thing for us to say that we are allocating money to our people, but it's another thing for them to actually have access to it. So by me time, totally want them BSP as well as NDB to see if they can make a special allocation to those areas so that online can you get equal opportunity to apply next in the money. So I'm challenging me, so uh, I will take it upon myself to uh, approach those two banks. A supplementary question was asked by a member for Mosby Northeast. This law, registration, we block him, 
lo medium requirement lo finance how by agriculture bank or bsp by helping in a way that our people are following the bank process Minister Duma said part of the agreement with the banks is for them to go out of their way to assist the people. Uh, online, you know, that, uh, all account them, we fly, ask him to the bank to establish a dedicated team of employees. Locate the BSP, they will factor those costs as part of the administrative costs of running this for us. So they will set up teams in these branches, especially for this purpose, to help mostly our illiterate people as well. Location low NDB one gun passing. Shamin Poreamba National MTV News. With the government's proposed changes to the mining and petroleum sectors, the PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum is calling on the government to consult widely on these changes before they are passed in Parliament. The Chamber has started hosting a series of webinars and will continue for the next few months to bring together industry leaders and impacted stakeholders to discuss concerns around the proposed changes. One reason the state is proposing changes to the Mining and Petroleum Acts is given its struggles in the past to fund projects and the low growth in GDP compared to the country's debt. How Minister Kua uh, proposed that, uh, he said that it's important that Papua New Guinea moves to a production sharing contract uh, system and away from our existing royalty tax system. So John, why is the industry pushing back on this, particularly since the systems are well established in oil and gas industry worldwide? This is the PSC system, John. And the government's proposed change from a royalty and tax regime to a production sharing regime calls for wider consultation from the industry and other affected stakeholders. Industry experts through this webinar highlighted how the production sharing regime has worked in countries around the world. So I think the, the move to PSC, um, in summary, we've got to be very careful. It's not a panacea that's going to give us an instant um, fill-up on government take somehow. We have a pie that's a certain size. It has to be split to pay off the investment and then a profit split between the um, investor and the state. We can engineer that through either system. But going to a PSC will bring in a lot of uncertainty, which will stall investment for a while. When it's established, it's less efficient than a royalty tax system and much harder to administer. And if you're not a regulator familiar with administering these, you'll probably f find that companies that are more um, expert at working in these regimes will certainly be able to um, advantage themselves out of them. So I don't think it gives you an easy way to a bigger government take. Former State Minister Atha Somare was part of the panel and highlighted how crucial it is for the government to ensure wide consultation to cover all stakeholders in the industry, most importantly the resource landowners. A, a poor decision or a bad decision is not just felt by the 33 members of the executive government, it's felt right across the entire constituent representative. So 111 members of parliament will feel the effects of a poor or bad decision. The Chamber of Mines and Petroleum will continue to engage stakeholders through webinars. Mining Minister Johnson Tuke and Petroleum Minister Karen Gakua were both invited to the seminar on Monday to share the government's views on this area and take questions from stakeholders, but both sent apologies. The next seminar is scheduled at the start of next month. Ruth Rungula, National MTV News. MTV's Vocal Fusion is back again this year due to COVID-19 restrictions here in the nation's capital. This time, the music entertainment program is going 100% virtual in search of its next musically gifted vocalist. MTV's Vocal Fusion is back by popular demand. Papua New Guinea's number one music entertainment program is coming to your screens again. Only this time, there's a slight change. Just 
We've been actually going to and from you know, uh, the table in regards to whether or not we're going to do the verbal fusion this year. Um, obviously for the key reason, because of the COVID-19 and the numbers increasing, the safety is, is uh, paramount, not just for staff, but also for the people out there. And also we needed to mitigate the, the risk involved. Due to new COVID-19 measures set in place here in the nation's capital, the Vocal Fusion team will not be travelling to outer centres for additions. Instead, the season is going 100% virtual. We won't be flying anybody in. We, we just can't take that risk. And we won't be sending crews out uh, to do auditions. Interested vocalists can enter the competition by sending in an audio or video recording of themselves performing two songs. This will then serve as their audition. It's hard for me to say I'm jealous of like the it. way like you're happy with me. Potential talents sending their, their videos in uh, to a link which um, if uh, they jump onto our, our Vocal Fusion Facebook page they will see the, the link that they can actually send their uh, video entries into. This is uh, specifically a, a video link because we need to make sure that we have the, the, the visual quality and the audio quality is there as well. For those that get selected, uh, we are planning to ensure that they, you know, they, um, we can help, we will help them out um, every way possible that we can to ensure that they stay in the competition. Um, that would be including you know, uh, data bundles that we would actually, we've actually factored in. Vocal Fusion Virtual 2020 call for entries begins this month. Solo vocal talents are to send in their video entries to www.emtv.com.pg forward slash VF Virtual 2020. We've opened up the competition nationwide. So nationwide meaning we are covering the, the categories into the four regions. The age limit is 18 years and above and auto-tuning or voice modulation is strictly prohibited. For more information, interested vocalists are encouraged to check out the Vocal Fusion page on Facebook. Entries, uh, call for entries are uh, now open. So as I mentioned before, just jump on our Facebook page um, uh, and follow all the instructions on there. Or watch the promo airing on MTV. And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2870 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0 0.2795 US dollars, 0 0.3838 Australian dollars, 0.2294 Euro and 28.97 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower. Coffee, cocoa and copra closed lower. Crude oil is trading lower, palm oil closed higher and copper closed higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 632.42 points lower. The ASX 200 is trading at 133.93 points lower. And the All Ordinaries is trading at 134.93 points lower. Among stories after the break, Prime Minister questioned in Parliament on security concerns following the recent cocaine haul. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. The undetected landing of the Australian registered Cessna 402C aircraft at Papa Lelia to transport cocaine to Australia highlights Papua New Guinea's capacity in early detection of security risks or breaches. This concern was among a series of questions raised by the Deputy Opposition Leader, Dr. Alan Marat, directed to the Prime Minister today in Parliament. He also asked for an update on the cocaine investigations so far. It's been over a month now since the Australian registered Cessna 402C aircraft landed in Papalelea undetected to transport over 700 kilograms of cocaine to Australia. The plane's failure to take off unveiled this discreet operation with five people already arrested. The police commissioner David Manning said this was the biggest cocaine haul in the country. 
The incident also revealed that the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary was working quietly with the Australian Federal Police on the issue for the last two years. Prime Minister James Marapa in Parliament today said this is because PNG does not have the full capacity to investigate such transnational crimes. The Prime Minister was responding to a series of questions raised by the Deputy Opposition Leader Dr. Alan Marat. Dr. Marat also questioned if the drugs are still in the country and if they are not, who authorized for the drugs to be removed? Quantity of drugs that was confiscated, let me inform this House that uh, these matters are now part of state property in as far as evidence is concerned. And uh, we are working in close collaboration with the Australian Federal Police because the plane originated from Australia with an Australian pilot which, who is still under our instruction. It's not, has, the pilot hasn't left PNGS yet, uh, is here and processed by our laws, but uh, drugs are in dual custody between us and the Australian Authority for evidences to be assembled both in Papua New Guinea as well as Australia to get into establishing the players who are involved in this one, those who... In addition, the Prime Minister said this is not the first incident. A similar find was in 2018 in Milimbe province. He said he has requested a police report about the 2018 incident. This is not the first time a drug bust or similar incident happened in our country. In 2018 or thereabouts, there was a drug, I think cocaine to be exact, similar to uh, the bet that was uh, apprehended when the plane crashed found in Budabudi Island in uh, Milan Bay. Uh, that in 2018 that was found, uh, confiscated, brought, and as I speak today, I have little knowledge of what has happened to that drug that was picked up from Budabudi Island. The Prime Minister, while admitting that PNG still doesn't have the full capacity to investigate such transnational crimes, the government is looking at passing new laws to stop such criminal activities. So, may this question be used as an opportunity for me to announce to everyone who want to use PNG as a drug, uh, drug trafficking country, uh, this will not be the case. Uh, our Deputy Prime Minister is working on penalty to lift penalty in as far as drug handlers are concerned and I ask every members of this house to come in November sitting to give support to the Deputy Prime Minister to ensure we give the correct penalty to those who peddle drugs, handle drugs or transact drugs in our country. Sharmin Poreyambe, National MTV News. Central Guy Sport is next. Kilawani has tonight's updates in sports. Thank you, Helen. Rugby League Oceania Cup cancelled and we go rural for volleyball. Join me in Trukai Sports after the break. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The Asia Pacific Rugby League Confederation has made the difficult decision to cancel Oceania Cup 2020. This is due to the multiple restrictions posed by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic on international travel, mass gatherings and sporting event biosecurity. In a media statement by the Asia Pacific Rugby League Confederation, APRLC, the Oceania Cup is a tournament that offers a structure for Pacific Test matches in a fair and competitive environment. And APRLC chairman Sandy Saka said it is extremely disappointing to have been forced to cancel the 2020 tournament. APRLC spent the past six months exploring fixture options for 2020 in an ever-changing COVID-19 environment. After being forced in March to postpone the Oceania Cup men's and women's fixtures scheduled for June, planning continued for fixtures during the end-of-season international window. However, ongoing restrictions and complexities about player travel, as well as continued limits on crowds attending matches, have made it impossible to deliver this year's event. 
This year would have featured fixtures for six men's teams, Cook Islands, Fiji, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Samoa and Tonga. And for women's teams, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand and Samoa. The recent rise in cases in both New Zealand and Australia, coupled with ongoing restrictions on travel and mass gatherings, have forced the hand of the APRLC. While having to cancel this year's event is disappointing, they have immediately turned focus to planning for the Oceania Cup 2021. This will be an important tournament for members as part of their preparation for next year's Rugby League World Cup 2021 in England. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. The Rural Volleyball Tournament in Central Province is set for the 14th of September. 40 clubs are expected to participate in this tournament as one association sets out to scout raw talents. The first of many rural tourneys set out by the Fairfax Association is set for the Independence Week starting 14th of September. Holding the tournament in the rural areas of Central Province brings more than just sports to the local communities. Over 30 to 40 teams to take part in this uh, particular competition. An attraction for the competition planned by the organizers will be the presence of PNG international reps in the code during the games. I have a call to also promote the villages in terms of uh, uh, economical benefits where they can sell their products in terms of food and stuff like that. The accommodation will be, at, uh, will be also seen as a vehicle to also for them to make some money. The tournament will see over 30 clubs participate. As the volleyball community in Central Province gears up for the tournament, National Federation President says this is a great opportunity for hopefuls to expose their talents. So when it comes to the PNG Games, we will know that you know these villages who, to, who take up whatever sports they wish to take can then be able to compete in the district level competitions and the, the electoral uh, areas competitions. So that gives them the space and the opportunity to be able to uh, uh, participate if they are lucky to be selected to take part in the PNG Games next year. And Trikai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Welcome back to True Kai Sports. To cricket, the Ketten Brothers T20 matches continued into day six today. The first match of the day saw Hastings there in Black Bus go head to head with Track Pro Madman. Madman winning the toss and decided to bet. After 20 overs, the team was down nine wickets, 440 runs. The chase by the Black Bus was not a difficult task as after 19 overs, the Bus went down seven wickets, 443 runs, winning the match by three wickets. The matches will continue tomorrow. We'll see grand final day on Friday, 11 September 2020. PNG Basketball Federation now has a new looking executive team. With this new team, the Federation is looking at a brighter future, especially in the area of finance. After the annual general meeting, the Basketball Federation Executive Office sees new faces on board. We have Gosa Jack, who is our new secretary, and also I see Awa from uh, Kerama Basketball as our vice president. Our treasurer Noreen uh, continues in the team and of course we have the executive officer Nick Darrow still there. With the new executives, agendas tabled are around strategic pillars, especially in light of the global pandemic and how this has impacted all Federation plans. While existing sponsors continue support, the new secretary Gosajek comes on board with a wealth of marketing expertise. They have a very good team in place um, and they have a very good um, financial position. If you look at their books, you can actually see um, that they've already got things in place. With Gosa's marketing know-how, President Caro plans to lift the game in terms of funding and sponsorship. Very much value his input in this whole process and his expertise in that area. The new secretary is confident financial independence is achievable. I think BFPNG is in a good position and if we can just sit down and work how we pitch to sponsors and the value we give back to them, we should be fine. And Trikai Sports ends there. Helen will bring you the weather forecast after the break. Good night.
Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for this morning and today in the southern region. Fine though partly cloudy at times in Port Moresby. Windy conditions with drizzles tonight and fine morning in Daru. Mostly fine weather in Kerama. Few rain showers and drizzles tonight and fine morning in Alutau. And a few rain showers and drizzles and cloudy morning in Popundita. In the Mamasa region, occasional rain showers easing tonight to fine cloudy morning in Lee. Fine, although partly cloudy tonight, with a chance of morning showers in Middang and Vanimo. Partly cloudy tonight, with morning rain showers in Wewak. In the New Guinea Islands region, a few thundery showers tonight and fine cloudy morning in Lorengau. Mostly fine weather in Kaviang. Mostly fine tonight, becoming cloudy morning with a few showers in Kokopo and Rabao. Fine, although partly cloudy tonight with morning showers in Kimbe and a few showers tonight, then fine morning in Buka. And in the Highlands region, occasional rain showers easing tonight to a fine cloudy morning in Mount Hagen. Rain drizzles tonight, then morning fog patches in Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru to Kerama to Yul Island to Hood Point and Samaria Island. Seas of 2 to 3 meters. Waters of eastern and western Milnby Islands with waters of Samaria Island to East Cape to Cape Bogle through Hue and Gulf to Finchhafen and with waters of Finchhafen through Vitias and Dampier Straits to CRC and Long Islands including waters of Long Island to Karkar Island to Wewak to Aitape and to the northern PNG Indonesian border seas of 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 0.5 to 1.5 metres. Waters of New Ireland, East New Britain and Bougainville, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres. And waters of West New Britain, seas of 1 to 2 metres. A look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea seas rough with southeast winds at 25 to 33 knots. In the Solomon Sea seas moderate to patches rough with southeast winds at 20 to 25 knots, increasing to 30 knots to the south. In the Bismarck Sea seas moderate to patches rough with southeast winds at 20 to 25 knots, increasing to 30 knots towards the southwest. And in the Pacific Ocean, sea slight with southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the way it is this Wednesday, 9th September 2020. From all of us here at MTV, pleasant viewing and good night.